How often do you send your mail list out and how long do you generally make each post? So that's, a, that's one, it's interesting, that's a great question because it's something I struggle with a lot. But what I've decided, I, I aim for at least once a month and when they first sign up, I have a series of emails that go out automatically over about a three or four week period. Um, because what I'm trying to do at that point is begin our, the building of our relationship. And I make it very clear in every one of those auto emails that if they respond, they're going to hear back from me, for sure. And, they, and I do every time. And some people are very anti-auto responders, and I understand that. But I'm trying to make something that's scalable, which means that it can get way bigger and I can still manage it. Um, so if I was, every time someone signed up to my mailing list, I was replying, I think that would eat more of my time than I, I want to make available for that. So the auto responders at first, and then after that, so sometimes they'll be getting a few at once if I send out my monthly one while they're in the middle of that, but it usually works out fine. And I'm finding now very few people are unsubscribing at the moment, and I'm getting quite a steady trickle of people subscribing to the mailing list. And that's kind of my long-term pot of gold, really, because that's what I control and what I have ownership of. Um, in terms of my communication with my community. Um, cool, great question. Anyone, anyone else? If Mike, before you, before you say a word. <laughs> Is it? I have a question about Facebook. Uh, I've got 3,500 fans, and they're real people, not like fake profiles, because I work in India, and there's a lot of fans. So, <laughs> everything is like times 20. But obviously, Facebook charges, so even though you, know, you have that many fans, People don't, you have the number of people talking about it. And I, I really notice, unfortunately, unless you pay for promotion, you know, the visibility is, is minute. I mean, it's just really annoying. So how do you, because I, I can see on your page, it's like, and I'm like, oh, you know, I mean, what am I supposed to do? Like, I can pay sometimes. I but never pay. It's, yeah, it's just, it seems like, you know, Facebook just. Yeah, they want to make as much money out of pages as possible. They, I read somewhere a quote that said eventually they're going to phase out like their goal is to phase out pages being seen by people unless you're paying to be seen. And, but what, what currently works, there's something called edge rank, which is basically how Facebook tells how popular a, a given page is. So the only way that page rank improves and that Facebook says, oh, this person's posting stuff people want to see and so putting more of it on their news feeds is by posting stuff that people want to share and comment on and, and be involved in. So I've developed my voice in the way that I speak with people that where I'm, I'm promoting, I don't know if you've seen, but I very rarely post like just a, hey, listen to my music kind of post. It's, gen it's Instagram I use a lot. It's a really nice way to, to share to Facebook because it's visual and you can say fun stuff and it's got a whole very interactive feeling about it. And I've, over time, through being an, at least one post a day, because the edge rank thing goes up and down really fast. So w what you're going to want to do is, is be sure to post one thing a day. And even initially, if it's sharing something that you've seen being shared a lot on the web, but so you know it's got a high chance of getting shared. But again, it needs to be in alignment with who you are and what you're doing and, and the community you're talking to. Because if, if I shared something about heavy metal, it might not resonate. So, although I did share this, this video recently where these cats were like really hungry and bouncing up and down and they had a heavy metal track in the background. It was amazing. But, uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but the thing is, I think I wonder sometimes when people look at my page what, what they think. But at the same time, when I do now post about a song, when I post a video, when I say, here's my Patreon page, or they get way less likes. When you actually do ask for something, you're always going to get less likes because people, there's this resistance to that because they're getting asked for stuff all the time by everything online. Um, but many more of them are seeing it. And, having, and my clicks, like I, when I check the, the insights, I can see that a lot of people are at least clicking it, even if they're not necessarily liking or commenting on the stuff where I'm asking them for things. And so, that, so I keep my edge rank high just by posting stuff that is exciting for me and fun, and I'm having a conversation with my community so that when I need to post something I want them to see, it gets seen. But Facebook is, is a bastard, basically, because they, they it's really cruel of them to be doing that to us in many ways. But OK, any, any other questions before we move to? Yes. The mic. Oh, well, nice. Uh, how much how much time do you manage to spend um, like well how how do you divide it between the kind of music and then all the talking to the fans? Okay, so for me, time management is one of my biggest challenges. It, it always has been, and it still it remains that. And I meant to say this at the beginning. The reason that I'm so excited to talk to you now is because I literally am one of you. I'm just learning all this as I go along. I'm teaching myself, and my big challenge is time management. So, what I have found is that I've lost a lot of time in terms of playing music, 
but the only reason for that is because I'm not managing my time. It actually, now that I have my systems in place around how I manage, like with Twitter, for example, I'm responding to hundreds and hundreds of mentions and retweets and messages every week. And the, I, every day I spend some time. And yes, it's half an hour to an hour every day. But that time spent is total gold for me. Like it's, it's something that I know I need to do. But what I struggle with is to then to say, I'm gonna spend this many hours doing exactly this thing, then I'm gonna go play some music. So for me, that's something I'm still working on. And I just think if, if someone has a slightly more willpower or better sense of time management, then, then that's how you do it. I know Tommy is Tommy's someone I really admire for that, where he's really working on systems to get time management down and, and get it sorted. And, and I'm always really inspired when we have a conversation because I'm like, wow, he's, he's so relaxed and he's doing so much. Anyway, but um, so we all learn from one another. <laughs> yeah, w would you say, if you were to give it an actual kind of figure of prioritizing, would you, what, would, what would you say about 50-50 with kind of music and... Yeah, actually, there's an interesting quote from Jack Conti, which I'm so glad you shared that with me, Tommy. Uh, he's, Tommy knows me really well at this point. He tags me and stuff on Facebook. And, and um, Jack Conti is the guy who started Patreon, which is this patronis, patronage website I'm going to tell you about. And he's also a, a YouTube star. He, they get him and his girlfriend get millions sometimes of views on their videos, and they've made a career out of YouTube before they even started this website. And he said that being a creative, an independent creative in this day and age is 50% art, 50% business. So that is the reality. You can, you can like it or you cannot. And, and at some point, definitely look into when you reach that point where you're making enough money, find people to support you, outsource. That's a huge goal for me at some point. So, yeah. Nice. Great question. Thank you. One little thing I would like to say, like say related to like, the, 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 the ratio of work, you know, art and business. Although I, I gave up uh, making new music for the last year so I can scale up darker music talks, the thing is, what I realize is that, first of all, you need to have a system in place, as, as Nate said. He, he worked on this a lot, so he can automate things and then he can spend more time making more music. Uh, myself, I was, I was in the army, so I didn't have any background in business at all. So w when I started making new, uh, new music, I realized that I cannot really scale up. And the natural question was, how do I scale up? So I gave up making music so I can learn about business for a year. I work really hard. So I now I have a little bit of a grasp about how business is going. And now I think like art and business are the same level. So now I can say that I can spend 50-50. But for me, my advice would be if you don't really feel comfortable with business, maybe spend a little bit more time on learning and, and getting stuff done, like the lean way, cheap stuff, experiments. And then once you're a little bit comfortable and you've built kind of a tribe where you can try stuff, then you can start raising like the ratio and getting in 50-50, which doesn't mean compromise your art, definitely. But at least, you know, business is very important as well. Yeah, so what Tommy's just said is exactly kind of this last uh, year and a half since I moved to London in January, and I've lived in London in the past, but I've been back in South Africa, it doesn't matter. Um, this last year and a half, I've spent maybe 70% or even 80% sometimes of my time working on all of this stuff. Like that's mainly what I've been doing. And what's been amazing in the last four months since I launched with Patreon is that suddenly I need to have a creation every month for it to activate the pledges. And it's been so inspiring. I've been just, I've been, and not only that, I've been writing poems, I've been writing songs, I've been um, making lyric videos for songs I already have. And it's suddenly like, because I've got this group of people who are out there like waiting. They're like, bring us stuff. And I'm like, and they love what I'm doing. I mean, well, I invite you to check out my Patreon page after this and go through, a lot, I post a lot of public stuff on my activity feed there. And you can see what, how, the, the interaction and how beautiful this group of people are and how much they, they support me as an artist. And I think being an artist, a lot of us, I'm often very insecure about my creativity and about what it is that I'm putting out into the world because I was told a lot as a child, you should, do, you know, you should have a fallback. You should do some, make sure you have something that you can have a real job in case this doesn't work out, as though being an artist is not a real job. And so I think this is like an, a habit and an attitude that I'm having to shift myself, and these people help. Um, right, so we've covered the wooing phase. And now we hit the exchange, which is where people start to spend a little bit of money <laughs> in all hope. And I'll be honest with you, at this point, this phase is not really happening for me. And this is where I'm kind of next going to be focusing is my merchandising and how do I offer products and things that I feel really excited about and motivated to offer to my, my community that they're going to be really excited to get from me. So these are some of the ways. And I've put crowdfunding into this as well because crowdfunding is a way to have an exchange. 
So these are some of the tools that I've seen online. Some of them I've used, some of them I haven't. No, I've used, no, I haven't used Pledge Music or Indiegogo. Um, but I did use MusicRaiser, which is an it Italy-based crowdfunding um, website. And so Stageit is for playing online shows. You can charge people for an online show. You need to have a community that's going to be excited to come and see that show and be willing to pay some money. And it's a tipping system. And you can offer rewards for different amounts of tips that they give. And I, I've offered, I paid a guy like $30 one night because he had handwritten lyrics and I wanted them. <laughs> and I got them. And now I'm going to give them to my sister for her wedding. So it's like, it's that connection again. And um, CD Baby, I'm very, con I, I love what they're doing. And I, they, they're like the oldest online music sales people around. Music raises for crowdfunding, Indiegogo and Pledge Music are all different ways you can crowdfund. Eventbrite is for running your own events. If you want to start getting into house concerts, charging people for that, um, or just creating your own events. Bandcamp is where I sell most of my stuff through um, because they, they only take 15%. I can put my music up there. They've got a beautiful interface. It's really, really, I love what they do. My stuff's on iTunes. I sell a bit through there, but not much. But really, like, I'm not making much money out of any of this right now, and I'm okay with that. I've been focusing on Patreon. I've been focusing on different things, and I'm getting to the point. My basic plan at this point is to, is to run an Indiegogo crowdfunding campaign to get the money to create my first line of merchandising. And um, I suppose, yeah, so let's talk about exchange more. So that's right. So the act of giving one thing and receiving another in return. That's basically what we're talking about here. And CDs, records, t-shirts, limited edition handmade handkerchiefs. Does anyone have any idea why I would have put something like that in there? Unique. It's personal. It's unique. Exactly. It's something, think so far outside the box that you can't even see the box in the distance. Like, if it, this would work really well, for example, if I was, um, you know, like one of those, those people who love to wear their suits with a little handkerchief in the pocket. If those were kind of the, the kind of people who listen to my kind of music, or, you know, I could do hats if they're, the, I, like, I love wearing hats. I don't know how many of my community loves wearing hats, but if I found that out, then I could offer, you know. But it's, it's not about just offering. To me, CDs are boring at this point. Like, I don't want to sell people CDs. They still want to buy them, but I want to re-educate them. I want them to be excited about, like, like, posters that are printed on seed card that has vegetable seeds in it so they can use the poster, have it on their wall for a few months, and then plant it in the ground and then grow some trees. Like, that, that shit is cool. That's fun. And it fits in with who I am as an, as, as an artist and as a troubadour, as someone who wants to support the world, um, us healing it all together. You know, it's part of what I do and who I am. So it works. So things like that. Live shows, again. House concerts, online shows. You may notice I haven't said anything about clubs or bars or the club scene or venues or paying to play. If you pay to play, you are killing us all. Don't do it. <laughs> Those people are sharks. And um, so for me, I've actually kind of at this point committed, not quite committed, but I'm not going to be looking for shows in normal venues anymore. Because what I've realized is that my emotional interaction. If I do one show, I did a show a few weeks ago in just outside of London, about an hour north of London. A woman I'd met again on Twitter. She bought all my albums based on finding me on Twitter. and She was super motivated. I posted on Twitter, hey, I'm thinking of doing a little house concert tour. Does anyone want me to play at their house? She was like, I want you to play at my house. I went up there. It was total donation based. No one had to pay anything. I was selling albums. It cost me, oh man, it was next to nothing in terms of fuel. And I made 130 pounds. So if I compare that to playing gigs in London, where I have to like beg just to get a slot with five other artists, I get 20 minutes, they want me to bring 20 people, it's like, it's, it's no, I don't even have to think about it. I'm not interested. But sometimes people will say, I've got this venue, we've got an amazing audience, I love what you do, I would, I'd be honored if you came and performed here. Because what I'm saying to you is that I'm starting to value myself as an artist. Because if you don't value yourself as an artist, how can anyone else? Even if you don't believe it, it's, you are an artist, and if you're here, it's because you want to be an artist in, in some way in the industry. And if you want to be an artist, then just commit to it. I had one of my, my past lovers, one of the most precious people in my world some years ago, uh, introduced me to her aunt, and her aunt said, what do you do, Nate? And I said, well, I'm, I work in the raw food industry, I play some music, I sometimes uh, I look after kids. I can... And when we drove away from that day, my girlfriend at the time looked at me and she's like, you are a musician. Just because that's not all that you do doesn't mean that's not what you are. And it really stuck with me. I've remembered that ever since. So you are an artist. Love it and embrace it. And be willing to wait for other people to get it as well, you know? <laughs> so crowdfund. Allow your community to support you in giving them experiences they value. 
you're not begging, you're not asking for donations, you're not like some poor little, please, I'm an artist, I need that. You're like, guys, I've got this crazy cool stuff that I wanna do, and I know how much you love what I do, and I, I've, I've come up with these incredible things that are unique, and just for you, just at this time, if you wanna be a part of it, this is how. Give me some money, I'll give you these things, we have an exchange that is value. We both get value out of it. That's how I did my crowdfunder, and also, don't crowdfund until you feel really confident about your community and start small, smaller than you think you need to. Even start yourself out on a tester one, just do 500 pounds. And even that's gonna, it's gonna stretch you and you're gonna need to learn a lot. A lot. But um, Anastasia from Indiegogo UK, she did one of these talks a few months ago and you can watch that on Tommy's site and she was off the scale awesome. She had such good insights into, into what it takes to run a crowdfunding campaign and, and, um, and, I, and I wish that I had heard her talk before I did my own one because it was, it was a total stress ball and uh, it's really intense. It's it's, you need like months of, like at least a month or two's preparation, solid preparation before you even kick that thing off. I had a friend the other day, he's like, so I want to launch a, a crowdfunder next week. Like, what do you recommend? I was like, <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> um, so yes, any questions about exchange, the give and take? Because then we're on to our final part of this little cycle that we're moving through which is commit, be in a long-term emotional relationship. So one thing actually I didn't think to put in with the exchange aspect is if you can exceed their expectations, do it. If someone orders a CD and you put a sticker in there or you write a note on it that they weren't expecting or just if you do anything that is over and above what it was they were expecting, you make a sincere emotional connection. And not only that, it's fun. Remember I told about fun right at the beginning? Fun. It's fun. Keep having fun even when you're working really hard. Um, I stopped having fun a few months ago and I ended up with a broken hand and that really forced me to stop and I have been having so much fun in the last few weeks because I had to stop for a while and relook at how much time I was spending on certain aspects of my life. So have fun. Um, so I'm only, I've only put one thing on the commit because this is really what is working for me. And this is Patreon. Yes? It's not really, it's not really a question. <laughs> okay. It's fine. If you this have isn't really a question, but I thought it would be a useful point for everyone. Um, you said about going the extra mile and not just giving, sending them a CD. I just noticed that you actually hand drew the, copy, the album cover of your CD. <laughs> so, yeah, which is like, it's, it's a unique way to go about <laughs> it. So I thought anyone else here might. might it's okay. It's not scalable. If you get a no, bunch of people ordering yeah. those, you're going to spend a very long time. I ran out of the original copies of both those CDs and I wanted to keep selling them. So I started just hand drawing. And I'm a terrible artist. If you go on and you look at my Bandcamp page and see the physical copy, there it is. It's stick men and like little lines. Like the sun is a gold ball with a flat house. And you know, it's like I do the kid stuff still. But people love it. And I have fun. Like I sit in my room with music on just doing like, this is so terrible, but I'm enjoying it. Um, yeah, so... Right, so Patreon. Does anyone here, has anyone heard of Patreon? Yes? So quite, the word is spreading. This is amazing. This is, this is a revolution in the way that we are interacting with our communities and they're interacting with us. Um, yeah, I wonder, is, I wonder if any of you here, ooh, nice, close. Tell me, drama, drama. You okay there? Um, so what you may have noticed in my whole talk today is I haven't spoken once about presenting a rock star persona to anybody. And I think a lot of people struggle with that idea because there's this sense of the separation between the artist and the audience. And for me, that's never what it's been about. And I think more and more artists are being invited and in some ways forced to open up to people. Because music, in, and not just music, but the arts in general, in, it was a way, it's a way to take what is emotional, and bring it into the physical, and then give it new life. And that's what we do. So, so yeah, for me, it's really about that personal, long-term emotional relationship. Um, so Patreon is a new way for people to become patrons of your art. So Beethoven, um, what's his name, Shakespeare, Leonardo da Vinci, these people were all supported by patrons to a greater or lesser extent. At that time, it was mainly royals and nobility. People had lots of money, big merchants. They would become patrons and support these artists so they could just make art because they valued just the art. Isn't that an amazing concept? Oh, man, I could go off on that one, but let's not. So, um, <laughs> so with Patreon, it's basically a modern version. It's, it's structured very much like a Kickstarter or Indiegogo or any other crowdfunding campaign. So you've got your video where you talk about what you're doing, why you're raising the funds, why you think this is awesome, and why you want people to support you, and what you give them in return. 
But instead of saying, this is so I can make a CD, it's saying, if you want to support me as an artist ongoing for as, as long as you want, this is how you can do it. And in my case, I've got anything from $1 a month up to, at this point, 500 is the highest one that I've set. I just set that up a few days ago. Because I'm, I like to experiment. So the $500 one, people get, at every level of the rewards, they get all the previous ones as well. So you've got to make it scalable, right? So for example, if I put it $1, I'll send you a postcard every si time you sign up. When I hit 1,000 people, I'm going to be in serious trouble trying to f send them all a postcard. You know, like At this point, it would be fine because they're only signing up a few at a time. But even now, if I have 10 or 12 people a month, I don't really want to be sending that many. Like, so what I've done is that from $10 up, they get one postcard. $25, they get one every time I'm in a new city traveling in a new country, I'll send them a postcard. And I've limited that to 20 people. So only 20 people can sign up at that level. And at the upper levels, there's less and less people who can sign up. And so it's scalable because at the lower levels, it's stuff that it's digital stuff. It's, it's um, previews to songs as I'm writing them. It's early lyrics. It's downloads before anyone else gets them. It's stuff that I can offer in a scalable way. It can get bigger, and I won't lose control. Um, so my highest level is $500, and what I've put that as is that once a year, if whoever, if someone does choose to, some people have a lot of money, and it's a possibility. So I'm experimenting. I will fly to wherever they are in the world once a year, to wherever they want me to once a year, and play a gig, private gig for them and their friends. They could send me as a gift to someone else. They could do whatever. <laughs> send me, exactly. It's a, someone did that last year. They they flew me to Germany as a as a surprise 30th birthday party gift for their friend, and I played at her birthday party. And so things like that, like. You never know who's out there and who's going to find what you're doing and want to support you in, in huge ways. So that's just like a random um, thing about that. So again, modern version of patronage. Um, you offer ongoing unique value to your kindest, most loving tribe members in exchange for pledges. Um, it's like Indiegogo or Kickstarter, but it's ongoing, not just once off. You create, you create art. The people who love it most pay you to keep doing it. It's as simple as that. What's not simple is that if you don't have a committed and engaged community, this isn't really going to work for you right now. So if you don't have people who believe in what you're doing and want to come and go, I, I love I, your, your art moves me, it's going to, you know, what, what, what is their emotional reason for wanting to sign up and support you? And that's okay, because this is not a short-term solution. This is a long-term, we're looking at like building a life as an artist, and it's going to take you a long time, and it's going to be a lot of work. And, and it is, I'm not even, at this point I've got 600 and. $40, I think, every time I put out a creation, which I do once or twice a month. Um, and it's slightly, so people, when they pledge, for example, if I like your music, I can pledge $5 a month, but I know that I can afford 10, so I set my limit at $10. And then if you put out two creations, I'll pay $10. But if you put out 20, I still only pay $10. Does that make sense? So people get to control how much money they're giving you. But some people can give more. Like they say, I want, if he puts out three creations, I want to give him the same amount for each one of those. And some people do that. So I usually put out at least two a month. Um, and I don't force it. If they come, I do it. I do commit to at least once a month because that's money that I'm relying on at this point. And that's about it on that front. I th do you have questions about Patreon? Is there anything? It's the mic. One, two, mic. Well, what sort of format do your creations take? Are, are they all music based? or? No. No, they're not. They're, so I broke my hand, right? And um, you can put out whatever you and your community are excited about. If they're excited, you can do. You could dance naked in the rain, and if they think that's a cool creation, they will be so happy to give you money for that. Um, I, I'm looking forward to watching all your Patreon videos. Actually, <laughs> I told them to do that. Um, so for me, like when I broke my hand, I, when I sent them all a message and said, how would you guys feel if I, I had a poem as a creation this month? And they were so stoked on it. I wrote a poem. I felt good about it. They loved it. They were totally stoked on it. And then actually just last month, my se no, just this month, my first creation this month, because I've only just been told I can play guitar again, like this week. So this month, September's first creation was an a cappella song. And I just recorded it on my phone. I, st I found a stairwell that, at a friend's um, flat, and it had this beautiful echo, and I'd been singing this gorgeous old Scottish song that I've fallen in love with. And I knew I wanted to give it to my patrons. And so I just stood in the stairwell and just did a few takes and got it all in one take, recorded the whole thing a cappella, and then found um, a Creative Commons so open licensing video online that anyone's allowed to use in any way they like as long as you give credit. And I used that video of some crows flying because the song's about crows. Put them together, put it up online. That's my creation. And some of them are like, this is the, my favorite thing you've ever done. So. It's between you and your community. If they love what you do, do it. Do whatever you want, as long as they love it. And as you love it, that's the thing. Don't, it's like it's the, it's the vibe. 
So I'm just going to, we can keep asking questions, but I kind of wanted to show you this. <coughs> Everything is nothing with a twist. And this stuff can get really, really fucking intense sometimes. There is so much to learn. There is so much information. There is so much going on out there. But in reality, everything is nothing with a twist. It's like we, we are magicians creating physical matter out of our minds. Everything that we consider normal in this world was once a dream in someone's mind. And I really think that that's an important thing to hold on to in those dark moments when, as artists, we are questioning everything. <laughs> um, and if there, please ask me, oh, there's a final little like things I think you should do part, <laughs> which is kind of like I just wanted to give you to like experiment a lot. Feel free to make a lot of mistakes. I, did, did I put that in there? No, but experiment a lot goes hand in hand with that. Like if you feel like you want to do something, just throw it out there. If you make a mistake and it affects other people, apologize for it. But you're doing your best. You're trying to learn. You're trying to move forward. Experiment a lot. Action matters. You could take all these notes and you could go home and be like, that's a lot of notes. I don't know what to do. Just take some action. If anything felt good to you, if you want to write a blog post about it, if you want to take a photo of yourself walking home, just take action every day. Take a bit of action. It doesn't have to be a huge amount, but action really, really counts for a lot. Network with people you like. Networking is so important, but people push networking so hard, they don't talk about the fact you have to actually like the people you're networking with. Um, I have a beautiful community of people all over the world who I network with. Some of them are in the top of their field in different industries. Tommy, I consider, in the top of his field in what we're talking about right now. And we network. We ask for stuff from one another. And we spend time hanging out. And there's people in this room who could be huge for all of you if you connect and you network. Make sure you like each other, though. Um, emails are gold. I said that before. But get people signing up to your mailing address right now. Um, if you're playing live shows, it's one of my worst things in the world is to get people to sign up at shows. I freaking hate it. It makes me feel so uncomfortable to walk up to someone and be like, will you sign up to my list? Ways I've found to deal with that, one is if you have the time, talk to everyone first. Go up to a group of people with your mailing list in your hand and say, but before you go, mailing list, you go, hi, how are you? Did you, did you see, what did you think of the show? Did it make you feel anything? What's the vibe? Where are you from? Have a little conversation. And then when you say, hey, Thank you so much for being here. Would you like to sign up to my list? At that point, again, you've, you haven't just met them and asked them to go to bed with you. You've at least said hello, and they've worked out that they like you, but they want to sign up. Um, find a mentor or three. There are many people in this world who are just that little bit better than you, or maybe lots better than you, but you won't know if they can help you unless you ask. If you have people in your field who are a few steps ahead, be, be courageous enough to send them an email and say, this is where I'm at, this is what I'm doing, I really admire your work. Use an example, I admire this thing that you did, so they know you're not bullshitting, that you're there, you care, you care about them personally, ask them for support. Will you, would you be willing to mentor me? Some, would you be willing to answer some of my questions sometimes, or whatever? That's, I have met so many other people who are important in my life just through that connection. Seeing someone I'm inspired by, going up to them saying, I'm inspired by you, could you support me in, in any way, just give me advice. Um, start now. That's it. When you walk away from here, start immediately with something. Start to talk to your community. Start to, to just be you and be real with the people who are in your world. And um, yeah, so I kind of, the summary was meet. For me, that's Twitter, Woo, Facebook, Instagram, SoundCloud, YouTube, exchange, let them buy your stuff, connect with you, commit, get them to become patrons. And that is me, the modern folk troubadour. So thank you very much and follow your bliss. <laughs>
we've changed so much over the last 100 years or even 150 when we started recording music, right? So suddenly you didn't have to be there with the person to hear them play. It's like, holy shit, like you could just take that stuff home with you. That's incredible. And then what happened is a bunch of gatekeepers got involved, these labels and these big business, and that's cool. It's, they, need, they needed to, someone needed to manage it all, but they had control to say what was cool and what wasn't. And we still have that to a certain extent with the labels, although it's crumbling pretty rapidly, and I'm excited about that. And um, the same with venues, where they say if you're cool enough or not to play. But if you become cool in your own right, you, be, you get to say what does or doesn't go. So I, in terms of the venues thing, if you want to keep doing venues, there are a lot of places that are still doing good stuff. Obviously, they're swamped with people wanting to play there. So it's much harder to get in. If you ha build even a small online community um, who are committed to, to what you're doing, to me, you're kind of already winning. Like I know now, through, I've got, as you know, 70,000 followers all over the world. There are many towns that I can go to where at this point, I'll maybe get 20 or 30 people but those 20 or 30 people are keen, and they're keen for my music. They're not keen because the promoter said they should come or because there's someone else playing. They want to hear what I'm doing. And so, again, I'm in control. And in terms of talking to people um, through Twitter and things like that, it's really, I, am a, I, I treat it as a conversation with friends. I, I just speak as, just as myself, and, and I, I come from the place of knowing that if I put my energy into it, I'm going to get really cool stuff out of it. And it's exciting for me. And so I connect on that basis of like, there's all these people out there who just haven't yet heard what I'm doing. And I want to connect with them. So, yeah. Did that answer your question? Was that? In a way? Was there, I, 